CataractCoach.com. Can we use a toric IOL in keratoconus? Guest surgeon is Dr. Alex Abdo Martins from Brazil. So, in this case, the important thing to remember is the patient has been wearing glasses for treatment of the keratoconus and refractive error, not a hard contact lens. You can see that the steep axis in each eye is very similar. And so that's very consistent. And here, look at the topography centrally. That three millimeter zone is pretty reg regular and pretty symmetric. Here's the lens calculation. This is looking at the endothelial cell count. And then here's the torque calculator for each eye. Again, very consistent on the readings, and that's helpful. So a surgical plan is here with a different toric IOL on each eye, and a little bit of asymmetry there in the amount of astigmatism. The main incision is being made here. It's pretty close to the steep axis. Remember, don't make the incision too far away from the steep axis because it may also change the orientation of the astigmatism to some degree. You want to keep everything close to that same meridian. Of course, for a toric lens, you want a nice, good capsule exit that's going to overlap your optic for 360, and that's to have extra stability for this toric lens. Now, the key is the patient wore glasses. Why is that important? Because the glasses are only going to fix lower order aberrations such as myopia and astigmatism. And if the patient was happy with glasses, chances are the patient is going to be pretty happy with a toric IOL because it also will only correct lower order aberrations and symmetric ones of that. Remember, the astigmatism on the IOL is perfectly symmetric and perfectly regular. And if that matches up reasonably well with a cornea that's symmetric and regular, we have a good treatment of the astigmatism. So lens has been loosened up here. And then Dr. Martin's going to do a nice phaco chop technique. The best way also to look at the central 3 millimeter optical zone. Make sure that's the most important zone and make sure the patient has a regular degree of astigmatism there. Finally, look at the history. If the patient's had a very stable cornea for many years, that's a good sign. If the patient's had fluctuating astigmatism, that's not a great sign. If you do put a torque lens inside this eye, remember, you may make it very difficult if the patient wants to go back to a hard contact lens. If you're using an RGP contact lens and to neutralize the cornea, it may unmask the astigmatism in that torque lens, requiring you to have an even more complicated um, contact lens design. So here's the end of the case, eye walls in the capsule bag. Very important to do this step, which is removing viscoelastic from behind the optic. You want the optic to be able to adhere quite nicely to the posterior capsule. And then rotating the lens to get it into the appropriate meridian and line it up with that steep axis. So it's a good video here. We learned a lot. You can certainly put a toric lens on with keratoconus as long as it's relatively regular and symmetric. Here's the post-op result. Pretty good refraction. 20-50 out of the right eye, 20-30 in the left.